a very very warm welcome and a good evening to all of you who are present here today it gives me great pleasure to invite all of you to the special community that is going to be created from today onwards equal as the name denotes it is an a platform a community for equal opportunities equal knowledge equal growth and equality as we move forward uh it's a very interesting concept that we have created where we want all school owners especially who are educators to be involved to be educated to be absolutely in the know of all that it takes to make their schools a huge success a big brand name in this country of ours and with that aim and agenda in mind we have come together to create this platform called equal and it's a very interesting concept because here we are not just going to be the ones sharing the knowledge we are inviting you to become equal partners in this community where you share as well as you learn to kick off this uh, beautiful project called equal we decided that the need of the r and the most pressing requirement of all school educators is to understand how to grow admissions in their respective schools this is as we start with the month of april this is the most pressing uh, i would say issue at the forefront of each one's mind at the background in the background in fact that's the only thing we talk and discuss at this point of time some might turn around and say it's already too late however today we are here to not just tell you that it's never too late to learn something new but it is also a wonderful time to share some best practices from people who are experts in this industry uh we have dr ashutosh tripathi director raipur uh, krishna group of schools from raipur we have dr dhiren mishra uh very limited words i have to describe him i will just say he's founder educare life educare and i'll request dr dhiren mishra to actually tell us a little more about the wonderful work that he has been doing for the past few years today he is actually going to support all of us in guiding us how not to get overwhelmed by this huge monster called admissions rather he is going to decode it and make it a very very easily tamed monster for us so with that we begin and without much ado i'd like to hand over to dr dhiren mishra i just want to put one more point across before we start you are most welcome in fact we really request you to post your questions as the conversation moves forward what ever query comes to your mind please feel free to write it in the chat box we will pick it up after dr dhiren mishra has finished with his little presentation and he will try and answer all the queries that have been written over here some of you have already posted your queries along with your registrations we will be picking that up also as we come towards the end of his presentation so with that i now hand you over to dr dhiren mishra thank you <clears throat> thank you kavita ma'am am i clearly audible to everyone absolutely yeah so uh, ma'am has given this work to me to tell something about my organization so uh, we are life life educare life is an acronym which expands as looking into the future of education uh, a concept started in way back in 2009 which became a formal organization in 2011 and uh, two days ago 6th of april we completed 12 years as an organ as as a statutory organization and uh, uh, in these you know 12 13 years uh, though i have been doing this school setup for last 15 16 years but in last 12 years we have set up close to 58 schools in about 17 18 states of india and our organization is a turnkey uh, 
solution provider, one of its kind in the country, where right from the feasibility studies to architecture to approval and affiliations, recruitments, trainings, SOPs, and yes, branding and admissions as well uh, are, uh, you know, our scope. And uh, as you see, looking into the future of education, uh, this logo is my life. And, uh, you know, uh, we've, we've done about 13 in the last 13, 14 years, about 56 schools now. We have offices in Bangalore and Raipur. Well, all that does not does not matter. You just have to Google uh, Life Educare and you can, you know, read all this. Let's not uh, waste time on these and straight away get to the business. So uh, before I start uh, this, you know, uh, very, uh, for a lot of us, it might be a pain point, growing admissions in the schools. Now, school for me, or school as a uh, you know venture, it is not a market-led uh, product. It is actually a product-led uh, product. I mean, you cannot really see a market in a school and then you know uh, go and uh, uh, set up a school. No, you actually need to create something. So I'm not saying that you know I will give you tips today. And, uh, you know, you, you will be able to, you know, grow admissions in your schools. To grow admissions in your schools, you actually need to work on the basics. The basic is right teachers, right kind of academic model, right kind of practices. So this particular session does not undermine, uh, you know, those three, four factors, which are very, very important. Uh, but yes, you know, doing the admission bit right is my uh, agenda for today. So let us begin. I'm just trying to share the best practices in branding and marketing, which, what we uh, you know, have followed at life and what we keep on advising to our uh, clients. Uh, so I started all this way back in 2006. Uh, and uh, you know, 2011 onwards, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an organization, but yeah, 2006. So when I started this, there were six and a half thousand uh, CBSE school. Currently, it is 29,000 plus. And, you know, each day, uh, and I remember in the year 2011, 12, 13, there used to be 3,000 schools every year who used to apply for fresh CBSC affiliations. There used to be 1,123 ICSC, which are 2,800 IB schools, you know, from 25 to 315. And while, I mean, I think this data is about uh, two months old, you would have had maybe 10 more schools, uh, you know, in IB being added to it and maybe 10, 15 more schools in CBSC being added to the tally. Cambridge from 30 to 700. My question is, has the population of our country increased by four times in the last 16 years? The answer is no, maybe the 40%. But the growth of CBSC school is, has increased by four times. Have the newly established schools delivered better than the schools started before 2011? Now I'm putting a benchmark 2011 because after 2011, actually schools started failing. Before 2011, you start a school and sooner or later people will come and the school will run. But after 2011, schools have actually started failing. You'll see schools are up for sale, schools are closing down, whatnot. And these schools which have started in last say five, seven, 10 years, are most of these schools in general able to win the parents' trust? Thing is, no. Most of the schools, if you are not an educator who de who's delivering what exactly is needed, people feel that it's a business that you are into. People feel, oh, one more person in the market with his product, uh, you know, where, where that, that's his business. And today, if you, are a, if you stay in a decent uh, city, say with a population above 5 lakhs, I'm sure there are 100 plus cities in our country with this kind of population, there is a history of a school which is which has failed or which is failing, which is struggling. So parents feel previously, my experience in 2010 level, people, people used to queue outside the school saying that I need admission. But then people used to feel till 2015, 16, people used to feel, let me see for one more year. I mean, I mean the first year, if the school does well, I'll send the kids uh, to the school. Then people felt that it's the CBSC or ICSC affiliation. Let me wait for two years and then I will send my child to this particular school. Now, people feel that let us wait for three to five years. Now, it's a vicious, uh, you know, catch-22 situation, I would say, where initially a school needs admissions, but people, 
uh, are not coming in because they don't really trust a new school unless the school has a proven track record. The school has an educator, you know, leading the uh, the school, and that's the reason why equal is about uh, you know equal is about uh, you know bringing in those educators who really lead uh, their schools from the front. Front, they're not just the investors in the school. Now, have these schools achieved numbers like 2,000, 3,000 students and reduced the queue outside the established schools? The answer again is no. I, I tell people, whatever we did in any, in any city, the queue outside the DAVs and the missionary schools could never reduce. You know, that, that, that was always there. And have these schools matched and surpassed the perception that the parents have about missionary and other trust managed schools? Not really. Why is that so? Why, why, why are the new schools not able to win the trust? The main reason behind this is that people want you to deliver. Just admissions would not really work. Just short-term marketing gimmicks would not work. For you know, uh, the, the easiest thing what a person does is first 100 admissions, no admission fee this year. That's the usual stuff people keep on doing. Probably that does not work. Because, uh, you know, people feel it's my, in fact, I, I know a few people who used to start schools and say that maybe, you know, 50 of my friends will send their kids into my school. No, I'm sorry, that doesn't happen. If a school doesn't really have a, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a solid offering, people may not, or people would want to wait because nobody wants to experiment with their children when it comes to their future. The next slide, please. No, this is not the one. Yeah, the next one. Yeah. So marketing of a school, uh, we divide it into two. One is for admissions. Another one is for the brand. Now, my experience, 80% of the schools are only focused about admission-led marketing. All they need to do is to grow admissions. And they think that, you know, uh, November, December, or January, you know, it's about four to five months of cycle, uh, you know, school starting in April, or maybe in June, uh, you need to start either in October, November, or you need to start something somewhere, you know, in January, and, you know, just do uh, 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 admission drive, bring more footfall, let people come, create a positive disposition about your school, and create artificial scarcity, you know, sir, can you come and uh, take admission today because we, we only have three seats left, wherein the parent also might know that, you know, there are a decent amount of seats left in the school. So this particular short-lived strategy that, you know, I call it as admission-led marketing of a school does not help in long term. In, in longer run, it does not help because every year, if you have that, uh, you know, admission open uh, for the session 2023, 24 or 21, 22, that does not work after a couple of years. So after a couple of years, if you're a new school, the first year admission led marketing works. The second year admission, you know, admission led marketing works. But in the third or the fourth year of the school, if you put out a newspaper advertisement, if you put out a uh, a hoarding, you know, pamphlets saying that admissions open for me, that's a negative uh, perception that you're creating about a school. That means after the third year also, you are up there, you know, uh, trying to sell your school. That, that, that for me is a very, very negative perception. I'm not saying don't advertise, but don't just focus it on admissions open saga. Because that's, that's a negative thing. People feel, oh, even after three years, you still have to ask for admissions. That's when, you know, I would suggest that you should shift on the brand marketing. Generating word of mouth. A newspaper advertisement is actually not word of mouth. A lot of us feel that, you know, a full page newspaper advertisement every month, every week, every day, whatever, you know. I, I've seen people signing up with newspapers say, you know, every alternate day there'll be something about us, some advertisement. No, that doesn't really help. That does not generate word of mouth. It's just a 15 second, uh, you know, exercise for anybody who's seeing that. Uh, uh, slide, or oh, sorry, seeing, seeing that particular page, you know. We need to generate the word of mouth and word of mouth can be generated only 
when you have you know decent offerings when you have you know uh, when you're doing things which people find innovative we all have our social media pages you know what are you posting there every time admissions open or are you also telling them what you are what have you achieved what are you doing how things are happening at your school how are you different so first thing is to you know for, to uh, get I mean there are a lot of questions that we have received and all these questions uh, you know are leading to how do I increase the admissions now increasing the admission is about generating word of mouth rather than a newspaper or a coding you have to become a part of the daily conversation are people interested uh, in discussing about you is something happening now uh, you know if you have started a school till grade six or seven you can't really come out with your board results that everybody's talking about no but are you doing something which people are talking about a, a small i remember you know people used to do this particular thing uh, about you know sending uh, diyas and candles to people on diwali and christmas and you know giving it uh, from school side and you know go and give it to your neighbors and do all that this used to create a positive uh, you know vibe about the school people used to feel wow this school this school is working on the basics or you know about celebrating a particular event in a particular way uh, off late you know schools in maharashtra are just gango about celebrating shivaji jayanti now these are certain things you know which you need to do become a part of the daily conversation is your parent really happy and do they take pride in saying that my son or my daughter goes to this particular school have you done something uh, like that where they say that uh, you know i go to uh, my, my child goes to this school or he just says that oh this is a very expensive school or you know see the uh, another thing that i want to say is the value for money quotient is very very low in most of the schools which have come up in last 10 years a lot of us only try and sell our infrastructure that we've invested so much there's a swimming pool there is this lab that lab all that is fine but that's just the infra that's your investment that that cannot be the only way to uh, you know in which a parent would take pride in your school that my son goes to uh, you know a school which has a fantastic building no that doesn't help after a couple of years first two three years it does so we need to do something i'll, I'll later on tell you how it has to be done now admission marketing so not the best thing as i told you to do after two three years of launch of the school because it is time sensitive i have seen not less than 100 schools i keep traveling you know i think one of the introductions that i did not give out of 765 districts that our country has i have been to over uh, 600 uh, districts of india so when i travel in india by june and july august even in august i've seen in some certain areas there is this hoarding you know of a school uh, wherein the school wala has actually signed up from january to june but you know july august no company does any promotion nobody wants to until unless there's an election in that particular school nobody is actually interested in taking that hoarding out whenever they get a new client then only they will remove your hoarding and they'll put your hoarding otherwise what happens is you see in august also xyz public school international school admissions open for the session 2023 24 and people feel in the month of august oh they're still asking for admission no they are you're not asking for admission but you know uh, the hoarding has not been removed so it is time sensitive admission marketing you need to do it only at the right time and it cannot give you results you know for years to come and it whatever creatives that you make that was the second thing i was saying it comes with a shelf life whatever you're doing it has to be only for two three months too much focus on admission marketing doesn't benefit an old school if you're an old school you cannot uh, you know uh, uh, i mean it, it doesn't benefit you because you know every year you can't say that you know my admissions are open i have i have not seen any DAVs or any you know missionary schools or or for that matter if i can take names dps is coming out with their uh, uh, you know advertisement that admissions are open why because the product is is made in such a way that they don't you know sell every time or even if they do in fact we also consult schools where uh, so there's a school where we are saying that this year i need to reject 250 admissions we even have that target even if we don't do anything you know uh, the admissions i mean the, the seats will be full but for a lot of schools i'm sure you must have heard 
that school, you know, for uh, 60 seats, there are 400 applications and, you know, 340 people are not going to get a seat. So even those schools do something about the admissions and the marketing, but that's not the admission-led marketing, but that's a brand marketing. The, the PPT is gone, uh, ma'am. Yeah, there was a net a technical oh, okay. glitch. Well, Sorry, uh, I think I'm back. Okay. I, I've just changed my settings right now. Just give me one minute. I'll just share the screen once again. Is it visible? Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Please. You just need Thank to... You. Is the display. Yeah. yeah, I'll just do that. Okay. Just give me one minute. Sure, man. <clears throat> this is the page we were no. Yes, ma'am. No, 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 no. Oh. Wait a minute. Just this. Right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Just please continue. I'll just do that. Yeah. Again, uh, you know, difficult to break clutter. In fact, again, my personal study from January to June, 60% of the media, you know, the hoardings, the pamphlets, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the videos that, that are being played in various malls and all, they're all about school admissions or college admissions. So it is, everybody markets at the same time. So if you are doing, uh, you know, your admission marketing at the same time to get admissions, I'm afraid it may not work. Extremely important for a new school only. You know, it's only important for a new school. You can do that for first two years. And it plays an important role in bolstering brand imagery. Initially, it does. I'm not saying that one page, one full page advertisement doesn't speak about your brand. It does not. Everybody can afford that. Or maybe, you know, a, a, a holding in the part of the town for 10,000 rupees a day does not help. No, it does. But, you know, it's only for initial few years. Ma'am, the next slide, please. We're, we're also going to tell you the strategies now, kind of a thing which you can adopt now, right now in April. So the long-term strategy that you should have is, it should be fueled by the passion group. You know, the people who advocate the school, not just the parent, even, even your uh, vendor, even your, you know, somebody who has come to school once for something, you know, a, a guest who has come, the opinion makers, you know, uh, people, those who really matter in that particular city, what do they talk about or do they believe in what you're doing? You know, people believing in what you're doing starts with the child and starts with the parent. I know a few schools where, you know, the, uh, the, the children in the age group of, you know, in classes, say five, six, seven, eight, also know that, you know, I study in a commercially driven school. Everything in my school is about money. If I don't pay fee, uh, you know, it, it becomes a problem. But if I uh, don't study, it, does, it is not a problem for them. So, you know, you need to have right uh, passion groups who are passionate about what you do and passionate about your school. It could be parents. It could be students. It could be most of our PTMs are only the blame games. Even there, you have an opportunity to make a passion group for you where you explain people what you do, you know, why you do, what, how you do. Social media has a dominant role to play, you know, so, and it's not that only three months, uh, uh, you know, in a year, you have to put up the admin, admission open notice and then, you know, boost it to the entire city. That doesn't really help. So I also suggest that if you're doing a good stuff, put it on your social media and boost that also. Let the entire town, you know, 50,000, 1 lakh, 2 lakh people see it's only about five, five to 7,000 rupees. You know, you can always... Uh, uh, you know, promote all your good stuff and let people know because you're then trying to make a, a passion group for you. Public relation is the backbone of brand marketing for schools. The PR has to be very strong. Most of the schools are so busy. The principal of the school, the management of the school, they're so busy managing their school that except the DEO offices and, you know, other statutory offices, people don't really know them. You know, meeting people on social occasions, inviting people to your school, uh, again, you know, so there are a few schools where we say that there is an expert talk every 15 days. 
there is somebody who's coming and addressing our uh, children and i'm not saying addressing all the children in the school you know a, a, a group specific you can plan it like that you know uh, where people in the town various parts of the town various people from various walks of life what do they feel about your school pressure on the school owners to maintain a consistent uh, messaging now it's not very easy for you as a school owner or a school principal you actually need to plan we all plan our academic calendar and keep sending the message that this is not happening this day that is not happening this day no we also have to plan this your your school calendar for your pr for your activities and you know get people kind of you know uh, so so you know delivering the right kind of message a lot of schools you know thanks to canva a lot of schools have this jayanti that jayanti this day that day and you know you will have uh, uh, so I, i i go crazy i get about 2000 messages from people on holi and diwali and out of 2000 maybe some 6 700 are schools i am not really bothered i as a, as dhirendra mishra as a school uh, you know consultant i am but think about a parent uh, or think about somebody who you have just bombarded with you know new year messages and all people are not even interested and sometimes some schools will have a video which goes in 20 mb 30 mb nobody wants to download that on 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 a diwali or a new year and 500 messages you know i will select and delete so these kind of conventional practices on social media also in fact uh, Uh, i think kavita ma'am is going to do that little later in this event but we have a session on 29th april right you know for right digital marketing strategy that you should adopt ma'am will you know tell you the details about it but you know consistent messaging uh, you know on social media or in you know in general is very important and being newsworthy takes advanced planning and inventive you know you need to be inventive about it you know not that a lot of people say that we need to do a barter if we you know uh, uh, give you the uh, give you the advertisement then only the news comes i think you need to do things which are noteworthy which are readable and then media will come and you know uh, uh, write about it when did we have a press conference in our school just a question doing a press conference on, on you know on school is not a not a bad thing we do it when we launch but not every time why can't we be friends with the media yeah so brand marketing for school is buzz marketing you know you need to create buzz about your uh, school and gradually after first or second year you have to take a gradual shift from admission marketing to brand marketing next slide please ma'am <clears throat> now buzz marketing is long term if i got somebody to my school who gave a right message when it comes to you know getting uh, uh you know people who, who who come to my school i don't need celebrities and actors you know i need a good cause somebody who's you know uh, doing a good cause is also you know worth being call, called to your uh, school you, you need to create a long term perspective if i get a you know uh, uh, uh what to say an actor to my school people will remember for a day or two but what message did you give but if you are getting somebody in your school who is a literary person who teaches you know for couple of hours he teaches your children about the you know uh, writing skills or how to be an author and the same person also does an event about a literary fest in in your school you know something uh, to do with uh, you know the literary the literary activities in the school in the town uh, you know music activity in the town people remember that you contributed in the school so sorry you contributed in the society with that particular person so long term you know buzz has to be created and it eases pressure on your admission marketing there are certain schools who i know who uh, one school we were a part of i would not like to take any schools names here because i don't want any conflict of interest where we have not given a single advertisement but there are you know uh, advertisement in the newspaper about somebody being coming about a cause being happening in our school about you know somebody coming and doing something worthwhile now look at last 5 years or 6 years we see the kind of people who are getting padma shrees they are real heroes have we have and these are the people who go to school selflessly they do not need something you know they know they don't need money 
But did we try calling any of these people and get connected to their noble cause? We can do that. Brings the existing and the prospective customer together. If a child or a parent is a customer for you, have you really done something where your existing and the prospective customer, you know, are talking to each other or, you know, are meeting each other? Have you really done something where, you know, your parent only talks about your school? You know, there are a few schools where parents say, you know, they ask, which school is your child going to? I mean, this is a very normal question people keep asking each other. How is your child doing? How are the studies happening? So, you know, if you are really creating a buzz, and this buzz is not just about the media. This buzz is also about doing right thing in the classroom. That's what I said in the beginning, you know, that you really need to energize your classroom and, you know, uh, those, uh, you know, little angels will, you know, get more footfalls for you. Next one. The next slide. Yeah. <clears throat> the one after this, man. So, you know, uh, building bus for our school, how do we build bus? Decide with absolute clarity. Now, let me tell you, at Life Educare, our next session starts the planning for our next session. And I would request all of you to do that. Your next session planning should start in the month, in the third or fourth week of July or first or second week of August. July and August, when there are very limited activities, when there are very limited festivals, that's the time when your, uh, uh, you know, principal and your uh, uh, teachers are busy completing most of the course. We need to sit and plan about the admissions. And you have to actually build a story. People should actually, you know, talk about your school as a story. Wow, look at those guys. They come and, you know, they do this for, the, for, for education. They do this for the kids. So your st story should have, what do you stand for? What's the curriculum philosophy? Is there one sentence in which you can define? A lot of schools, you know, have those taglines. I have you know, seen uh, uh, people, you know, writing school, you know, the tagline is preparing for life, making them ready for life, making them, you know, leaders, future leaders and all that. And when you ask them, you know, how are you... Uh, making the future leaders, they don't have an answer. Do you have a curriculum or a, you know, um, uh, a, a plan where you are inculcating leadership? So, you know, the, the, the saying and doing, uh, the, the higher is the gap between saying and doing, the worse are the chances that, uh, uh, you know, uh, sorry, the, there are likely the chances that, you know, your marketing, admission marketing, or, you know, your buzz marketing also will not work because you are creating a buzz on wrong perception. So first thing first is you need to tell them what is your curriculum philosophy. This is what you do. And when do you what you do? You know, whatever you are doing, when do you do it? Is, is everything set in your school? Is there a way in which you develop a child that I do this in July, do this in August, do this in September, October, or, or only, you know, there are schools who say that uh, my annual day should be in the month of January, February, so that you know, the footfall increases more admissions. Necessarily not true. Where, where is the infra? How does that work? Is there a planning, you know, uh, while you were designing the infra? Or it is just a school? Even if it is just a normal school where infra is not really uh, thought of, you know, while you were doing the school, there are ways in which, you know, uh, you can actually create infra. If you Google this, I think our website has this blog, I don't know if it is up on, on pedagogical infra. Can you actually, you know, add certain stuff to your uh, school, which makes it a very, very unique school. And it doesn't take money. It takes a thinking. There is something called passive learning. In most of our schools, you'll see all the corridors with, you know, uh, uh, photograph and write-ups also about uh, all the famous personalities, the famous inventors, scientists. Now, whatever is written, in 10 years, when a child is there, you know, it creates a, uh, I think I'm digressing, but you know, it creates passive learning. So you, you, that's, that's the way, you know, you can all, also create a buzz about your infra. People will go and say, see, look at those people, very simple school, but you know, they've created something in this school, uh, which is, which is promoting, you know, a little more learning than other schools. Why do you what you do? 
is there a reason or most of the schools i've seen i've seen it in that school they they do it let me do that or copy that in my schools as well was there a logic behind uh, what you're doing recently i was laughing in a you know in a place there is a school which has 3000 children it's a day school with uh, you know uh, 7:30 to 1:30 as the uh, time just because a new school came up with swimming pool and indoor sports they constructed a swimming pool worth 70 lakh rupees and they say i also have a swimming pool i am sure there is no mechanism why of which a school with 3000 children can have you know a time table where they can make each child swim at least once a week no that is not possible i mean at least i don't know if somebody knows write to me i'll be happy to you know uh, use that in in some other school but there's no mechanism so please decide what you do and why you do that swimming pool is not the end of the world who are the teachers who weave the magic at your school i i uh, i've taught for 9 years before i started this consulting and one thing is you need to have good teachers and you really need to take care of them i i i, I you know uh, i i feel pained in my heart when i see that teachers are not really a part of any of these entire activities that a school does how does the school work the extra curricular the sports it is not necessary that you know you need to do all the competitions that you know every school does but whatever you do does it have a relevance in your school and let me tell you promoting all these you know around the year is the basis for your buzz marketing you might feel that it doesn't work but no i have seen for at least 5 6 years these are the real stuff who actually generate footfalls and in couple of our schools even before the admissions are open people come and do pre registrations because they have been observing and seeing the school from last you know say 6 months or 8 months next slide please ma'am i'm afraid we are running uh, out of time as well uh bring parents into schools for different results at regular intervals not just the ptm where the blame game happens you know you can bring the parents at different intervals for various reasons you know otherwise parents come twice to pay the fee and to uh, you know attend the ptm build properties and involve others you know is there any excitement around the inter school events or uh, you know ncc i think you know a lot of schools they don't even bother about scouts and guides ncc and all these things somebody asked for a rural marketing question we we run a rural school where ncc a lot at least 400 kids are admitted in that school because they still value ncc and the parents still value the ncc or you know is there something which your school has which others don't have or some some championship some tournament some uh, debate some declamation you know something different about your ptms or your uh, expert interaction so you have to build certain properties which people feel that are very very unique to your school and that's the reason why they come to you because that's an add on to others create your school strong profile on web now having a facebook page instagram page and only you know doing admissions are open or you know uh, a video comes for 15 seconds and for admissions contact no that's not the way you know you have to really create a very strong profile people should wait that you know oh this schools i need to sub like their page you know we have built up built only 50 schools but i have over 2000 uh, you know subscribers to my uh, uh, facebook page and over 4 and a half thousand subscribers on my you know linkedin group why because we i'm i'm trying to you know bring in a personal um thing from thing here but you know people need to subscribe to your page because they know that these guys are going to give me something which is is going to be a learning for me or which will be a a pleasure to my eyes you know reading or seeing that next slide ma'am now the last thing is strategy now what do we do now do a quick competition mapping a lot of us uh, do a superficial competition mapping i have seen people starting a school comparing other schools 
uh, and their fee structure and trying to keep the fee structure lesser than them while they have actually spent more than the previous school. It's not about keeping the fee low initially or it's not about keeping the lesser fee till the time you gain strength. There are places where we have started schools where you know we were charging two, two times, two and a half times of the best school. But we could define or rather you should define why are you charging that fee or why are you, you know, different and why do you, you know, kind of have this kind of fee structure or what is that others are doing? What is that which is missing? Another case study, you know, uh, uh, we were doing a school uh, in, in, a, in a relatively smaller town where people, you know, uh, uh, wanted a good school. Otherwise, they were only, you know, uh, the, the typical missionary kind of schools. We saw that there is no activities that people have uh, or, or the children get. There is no space where, you know, kids can go and have their activities. And, uh, you know, keeping a children, the, the children occupied or busy in that particular, uh, you know, uh, place after three o'clock or after 3.30 was a challenge. So we kind of came up with, uh, you know, after school activities. After school activities are a great way to, you know, bring outsiders as well do something which other schools don't do it and you know you provide it after school in your uh, campus where others are also you know allowed to come so do a competition mapping and the purpose of the competition mapping is not to see what their infra is or what the fee is but just to you know analyze at micro level what do they do how do they do and how can i do that thing or something more better than them so tools for competition mapping. Currently, I cannot give you all the tools, but it's about what do they do? How do they treat their parents? How do they treat their children? How do they treat their teachers? How do they, uh, you know, conduct their events? How do they conduct their sports? How do they conduct their activities? How are they running the school? You know, how 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 is their social profile? So, you know, Facebook page has this option that you can, along with your page, you can also have, uh, you know, your competitors, uh, you know, being tagged to your page. You can see what are they doing? How are they progressing? So, you know, uh, you need to have tools for competition mapping, decide your own criteria, uh, or maybe uh, if you want more thing, I can, I think if you go to our website, there is something on uh, uh, admission marketing as well. Choose the market, build a theme that needs to be hammered in the market. Now, it's not that, you know, uh, I called a celebrity and uh, uh, my admissions are done. No, you need to have a theme. What is it? So the, the last slide I told you, this is what I believe in. And I keep on hammering that thing in the thing. I mean, people should know that I believe in it. And you should only propagate what you believe in. Don't go to any other school, copy them. I mean, come back and just copy, copy, copy them. People might ask you this question. So I'm sure, you know, uh, the parent who I told, he went and asked that uh, school's principal, how are you going to make sure that my child gets once a week to swim in your school full of 3000 kids? So, you know, you need to really do things which can be questioned that easily. You know, you're doing it right the first time. That's what I tell people doing things right right thing right at the first time is all about running a school you cannot be seen experimenting when you are you know proposing the parent that send me your child i'll make his future you can't be seen experimenting choose the marketing mix marketing mix as in there's something called atl and btl above the line you know the mass media what are you doing for uh, you know to, to reach out to people directly is it just that i will go every weekend and i will conduct uh, some activity in the society and Whoever comes, I will get their phone numbers and then I will uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, call them, please come and see my school. No, that's not enough. You need to kind of, you know, conduct activity, you know, the, the uh, mix of activities where, you know, people really find pleasure in coming to you rather than you persuading them, uh, you know, to come to your uh, school. Uh, you know, I think a uh, uh, couple of years ago, we were discussing and we, we do this uh, in, in a few schools that, you know, you need to, the, 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 uh, the, the first activity of the year can actually be an activity which brings public at large together. It's not just about an Anand Mela. It's, it, it could be about, you know, having a literary fest. 
it could be you know having a uh, something to do with nature collaborating with any of the governments or local uh, uh, bodies and you know coming and uh, doing certain uh, uh, activities which gives a social message so you know plan your marketing mix what all things are you going to do and don't just keep admission open in mind just keep that i need to create a buzz people need to just know about my school and they should be inquisitive enough to come and see admission open in the third fourth year does not bring anybody uh, to your school and tools i think you know uh, this online and uh, offline all these things i think the next webinar that is happening on 29th will have this thing right online strategy again comes there and online strategies are you know quicker and uh, cheaper and better and we can also this is uh, one thing which we have seen your youtube page may have five likes or 10 likes you may find out the local social media influencers somebody who has got 5000 10000 5 lakh 10 lakh uh, uh, followers and if they propagate about your school which is way cheaper than you know putting up a newspaper advertisement next slide ma'am hold a certified meaningful and enriching summer camp not mere engagement i have been an advocate of this the activities that you do it just it should not just you know engage the child it should also enrich them planning a summer camp is not about doing that uh, you know uh, uh, hip hop salsa and dances it's it, it's way beyond that so plan something which also enriches them footfall generation through letting school as a venue for social cause a lot of us don't do this you know uh, uh, letting the venue for social cause come and do stuff sponsoring local body meet, meeting you know like rotaries lions jcs bni doctors association lawyers association they are the people who are also the opinion makers if you remember you know four slides ago i was telling you the opinion makers of the town are the opinion makers of the town aware of what you do they are aware that you are a school that is for sure the day you gave full page advertisement everybody knows that you are a school but are they aware what you do the best thing is to host them in your school and i think this is when it comes to cost it is one of the cheapest way reaching out to influential teachers and coaching walas not for them to say that you know get me admissions i'll pay you money i think you know usually what we do in a school is we just want to meet 1000 people in 6 months telling them about what we are and that's why very beginning i said you need to have a product which you go and sell if you do not have it you are a, you know just a normal school with brick and mortar walls and roof and you know a, a teacher who is doing the normal book teaching then i think no amount of marketing will work for you so once you identify your school you know once you discover the school uh, for the society go and tell them that this is what we are try this you know meet 500 people and just tell them about the school don't say that please come and take admission just tell them about the school and your passion will be seen uh, and experienced by that person and probably he'll ask a few people to go and visit your school because they found that you are passionate about what you do tie up with preschools uh, a very easy strategy that you know go and ask them that you know we'll give you some preferential admissions and meaningful parent workshops and this parent workshop again could be for public at large i've never seen a school saying that you know i am getting a, a great parenting uh, you know specialist and the entire city is welcome to come i have never seen that people only call their own parents or their prospective parents it doesn't doesn't really work the next one so I think we've come to an end to the presentation, Dr. Dhiran. Dhiran, so thank you so much for this uh, very, very interesting conversation. There are so many questions already lined up for you. Uh, actually, uh, I think you can continue for another hour, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a couple more hours. Yes, absolutely. And as we all know, uh, this is a very interesting topic and very close to our heart because Somewhere it is the crux of how a school moves forward. Having said that, I also want to re-emphasize what he said, that admissions are important, but more important is focusing on the academic part of it. 
once your school is doing well, there's no reason for the admissions to not stop. So you need to actually focus a lot on brand building also. And I mean, all schools' brands are dependent on what they deliver. A lot of it depends on what you deliver. So, you know, keep continuing the momentum, the next me session that we will be having is how to use digital channels to increase admissions. And, you know, contrary to what a lot of us might think, the digital channels are not limited to just Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. There is so much more to using digital channel, to what kind of digital channels can be used for the purpose of promoting admissions. Uh, we will be discussing all of this on 29th. And we'll be, I think um, Ashutosh has already shared the link in the chat box. You can save that for yourself and you, you can register once again for the next one. In the meanwhile, I think we will just move forward with some Q and A's. So um, the very first question I want to ask you is, typically, since this was all about admissions, uh, somebody has asked, how do we retain numbers? That is, how do we reduce attrition in schools? It's a very common thing. First point, we are focusing on bringing admissions. At the same time, we're trying to ensure that the ones who are already there do not go out. So. Please. So I, I'll, I'll give you, you know, an example. I was visiting a school recently where the target was to have 100 admissions every year. In the fourth year, okay. they had 100 admissions, but they had 39 TCs as well, which effectively made, you know, their admissions uh, tally going up only by 61. So, you know, the only thing is just to, you know, just that, you know, you need more uh, customers. You can't lose your existing ones. And the existing ones have come to you for what? To study, right? So while you are busy, right. you know, making your admission strategies, the classroom delivery is very important. Again, when you shift from, buzz, from admission marketing to buzz marketing, these are the buzz makers. And if there are a lot many people who are leaving, you know, it creates a negative buzz. So the only mantra to retain kids or to stop, reduce attrition is to deliver right in the classroom. Nothing else. I don't think there's any other answer that I can give for this. True. I completely, totally agree with you. Uh, Somebody has asked about admission marketing. Should it be just WhatsApp or more? Can you briefly, very quickly give in a few sentences a little more about that? Though yeah. I did say we will be discussing it in the next session, but if you can just answer that little bit of a query. Yeah, so uh, when it comes to WhatsApp, again, WhatsApp is a very, very abused software app, you know. Uh, a lot of us spend, you know, mm -hmm. at least three to four hours every day. There are people who spend about six to eight hours every day. There are, you know, couples fighting that I saw you online at 30 at night. There's there a lot of stuff. Now, WhatsApp marketing, and you know, I have two phones and one phone I've abandoned only because I get some 200 messages on that, you know, on, on WhatsApp every uh, every day. Your WhatsApp, mark, you know, is, is not the end of it. It could be uh, the thing, you know, I prefer to send my WhatsApp messages Sunday, you know, morning to people, those who I want to connect. Or there could be time, you know, you can't really just be... Uh, if you have a number, can't really be bombarding people with, uh, you know, messages after messages. And admission open again on WhatsApp is fine once a year. But every third week, every second week, if you do that, no, WhatsApp, no. If you are, if you're sharing certain good stuff about WhatsApp, there are people who have, you know, uh, channels uh, or, or, you know, uh, uh, WhatsApp broadcast to me, uh, you know, every month. But I know something what they've broadcasted makes sense. So, you know, you need to reach out to people with right content, not just your content, content which, which you want them to see. You should also understand what would that be which they would want to see. Right. There's another very interesting question and I'm going to run through because we're really running short of time. But uh, there's a question, how can we increase admissions to standard 11th? 
I think this is the pressing need of the hour. If you can just give some inputs. Sorry, ma'am, but can you, I, I couldn't hear. I, I'll repeat it. The question is, how can we increase admissions to standard 11th? Well, As this is the right time. Well, well, there are there are shortcuts. People are using uh, various coaching walas that I have an integrated coaching. That's one way. And 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 you know there are uh, people who also have uh, dummy admissions tying up with these coaching walas. But those are shortcuts. Those are not really uh, you know uh, uh, far fetched strategies. But again, when it comes to grade eleven, you need to find out. Most of us are just focused about. The science and math. I'll give you one example. You know, it's a very successful school of a uh, of a state capital which we run, where we were sick of coaching walas. You know, uh, uh, poaching our grade ten children and uh, you know making them take admission in a dummy school, and you know the kids were there in the coaching every day. What we did was we said, fine, if I can stop those genuine science ones who want to study and then go in the evening to the coaching, <clears throat> I will I will retain them. But we also started working on how can I cater to my humanities? How can I cater to my, uh, uh, you know, uh, commerces? And our humanities program in that school now is more successful than uh, uh, the science ones. So you just don't have to focus on the science ones. And when it comes to sciences, Again, I'll go back to the classroom and the delivery. If you have great teachers who can deliver in your classrooms, people will leave other schools and come. There are schools who have outsourced the 11th and 12th completely to the coaching walas. I think I, I, take, I take a contrary uh, you know, uh, stand here. If I can really teach them well, there are enough and more takers who would come and you know sit in your classrooms in grade 11. True, very true. Coachings are actually the parents' last resort. When they give up on the schools, that's when they go to the coaching institutes. Okay. Thank you so much. There's one more question. Uh, in spite, this is a question by one of the members today. In spite of good number of forms being sold, conversion into admission becomes a challenge. How do we address that? Yeah, because see, when a parent comes, I'm glad that you are able to sell good number of forms and then they're not turning up. There are schools who would say that I have 300 inquiries, but only, you know, 24 registrations. That is, you know, people have bought forms from you. And out of 24, maybe the three have so far taken admissions. Or out of 500 inquiries, I have only 100 registrations. This is because when they came, have you actually designed a prospective parent life cycle? When he comes, what do you do? Because most of the parents I've seen, 80% of the parents, when they come to you, they'll say, we've come here for the admission. What is your fee structure? That's the first question 80% of them ask. And that's when, you know, if you can actually, uh, I mean, if you, if you only tell them about the fee, I tell people you have not come to a vegetable market to buy, you know, your uh, uh, weekly supplies of vegetables that it, if it goes bad, you'll throw. It's a child's future. Please don't ask what I am going to take from you. Please ask me what am what is your child going to take out of the school? You know, what, what will be your child's take out? Very true. And, and explain them well. They must have come and, you know, just because you were courteous with them, you can, uh, you know, just give them, uh, uh, you know, forms. They will, uh, uh, you know, take, take the forms. But for them to come back and register and pay the fee, the magic has to be done during that 10, 15 minutes or half an hour of, you know, the visit that the parent has made. Have you made a year? Uh, I mean, every principal fancies to read a, uh, you know, annual report uh, in, in the uh, annual annual day. But do you have an annual report kinds for, you know, for the prospective parent that this is what we did in last year? So, so effectively, in one sentence, I would say what you're saying is that schools, please be prepared for your parent who comes to you. Don't wait for them to question you. You need to, you need to be very, very sure what is it that you want to showcase of your school when they come to you. If they're buying forms, that means you have a good word in the market. But if they're not registering, it means somewhere once in your campus, you are not able to fully convince them about their, your school being as a feasible option for them. Thank you so much. 
one question that has just come up. I know it's coming. This is absolutely going to be the last one. Somebody is asking, shall we use teachers for field marketing? This is a very quick answer. Well, if you go by the government, the government actually, you know, this is a part of a government teacher's job description to do the survey and get the kids enrolled. But I somewhat feel I, I it's actually you know job description for a government teacher to actually get the you know admission drive done. But I don't think that works if you run a slightly premium school because parents are not really kids are not really uh, sorry. I, I think this was a job description of a much earlier time. Now is it when, not? You know, no. I mean, they probably must have not rectified it till now. But uh, I personally don't think the teachers are really meant for marketing. They are meant to teach. And if teachers do their job very well, you don't really need to depend on them for marketing. They need to get specific people who are trained in marketing to come and do the marketing for the schools rather than trying to utilize teachers with those skills. I would like to read what, what a panel, is, you know, what, what an attendee is saying. Sonali Prakash is saying, uh, for your valuable inputs. Thank you. Schools, these days are overdoing marketing and advertising. I completely agree with you. True. You know, it is done throughout the year, focusing only on admissions. Yes. You know, don't overdo marketing. And yes, ma'am, I completely agree. I, I wouldn't want to send any of my teachers in the field to get admissions. That's not their job. Absolutely. So now, thank you so much. Uh, just like we would like to uh, you to just summarize and tell us so finally, what should be the focus for the month of April? So for the month of April, I think whatever time you have, I would say do a quick uh, competition mapping if you haven't done on the criteria that I mentioned uh, in the beginning. And, you know, try and create, uh, you know, more passion groups within the community, within the society. I think if you have this thing that, you know, uh, you need to meet maybe 200 people, you know, people, those who matter in the community, in the society, and just tell them that I have not come here for anything. Maybe your child is already in the college, but you know, uh, what you can do is you just listen to what we do and tell people because we are not a profit making school, but we are a movement. Best month for a Thank you. Arjun no, Mundraji. Please continue. Sorry. Yeah, so I think there was one uh, thing Arjun Mundraji is asking uh, best month for effective marketing. Uh, much before your, uh, uh, you know, examinations start and much before, uh, you know, a parent, I think, would make up his mind to shift the school in the month of November, December, January. You know, beyond that, if a parent is changing the mindset, it's a lot of times parents are also wrong. I know parents who change schools every year because they're not happy anywhere because the problem lies in them. So the best month to target good parents is about October, November, December, January. Thank you so much. And now I'll invite uh, Dr. Ashutosh Tripathi to conclude this session because this whole platform, this whole webinar has been to a great extent his brainchild. So I'll really request him to say a few words and conclude this meeting. Dr. Ashutosh. Thank you. Thank you, Kavita. And uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Diren. Uh, a great friend uh, and and an awesome awesome uh, teacher i would say uh, the kind of responses that we are seeing already uh, they are telling that uh, you know uh, it was such a useful and a neat needy session for all for those who are there thanks again uh, all the attendees because uh, it's you who made this session possible uh, the thinking was uh, and is uh, you know that uh, there are a lot of schools which are passionately run by educators and the principals or the, the, the educator director who runs these schools are not necessarily, you know, uh, uh, too great in these whole marketing thing. Uh, and uh, Dr. Diren has done a great job in just consolidating and how to think about admissions per se, because schools run with admissions. You have, we have you a great desire to run a school, but if it is, doesn't have kids, how will you run one, right? So uh, once again, thank you very much, all of you, uh, for uh, joining and uh, equal uh, as 
as uh, told by Kavita in the beginning, you know, uh, is is meant to create this equal opportunities for all of you. And we'll be continuing more on 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 this, especially how to grow uh, your school. You know, um, every every now and then. So the next session, as as told, will be on 29, which will be specifically on how to use digital channels. As told by Dr. Direndra, you know, it's a long term process. The whole year is on. Let's we we will shall keep. Uh, you know, uh, coming back to you, informing, sharing, we'll continue to have this webinar twice a month. And uh, we'll also be having a digital community in which uh, it'll, be, it'll be not on the WhatsApp. We don't want to use WhatsApp uh, as, the, as the way because, you know, you already are a part of 100 groups maybe, right? So uh, we, we, we would be using a different channel, uh, a, a platform, for keeping you in a community where there can be more close talks on specific issues, specifically on uh, more admissions, uh, specifically on growth, specifically on uh, other topics which are related long term for making that buzz marketing, as Dr. Dharen would put it. So thank you, Dr. Dharen, once again for making uh, this. Thank you, sir. My for pleasure. For all of us, thank you all of you uh, for joining uh, this event. Uh, you will be getting a recording of this event, most probably. I think uh, my tech team will see. And uh, But in any case, I look forward for, to meeting you all again on 29th of April for another uh, session, which would add value uh, to some learning. And we shall learn from each other very soon. Thank you so much. And have a great evening. A happy Saturday uh, to all of you. Thank you, Dr. Dhiren. Thank you, Ashutosh. That was wonderful, all of you. And as he rightly said, we are creating a platform. Please keep looking out for this space. We will be connecting with you, not just with information, but with all the tools and how to use them also. Thank you so much, everyone, and a very happy evening to all of you. And we have, uh, I've